Hello and welcome to my dungeon. While working on my adventure for Death in Space, I noticed that many RPGs are set in a world that is strewn with ancient ruins and old dungeons, be it the Forgotten Realms, Aventuria or Lepidoptera. And I wondered, why? If you too wonder, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. The channel is almost up to 1000 subscribers and it would be amazing if we could hit that number. Thank you. Now, let's dive deep into today's topic. To start our investigation, we should take a look at the ancient history of our hobby itself. Even in the first edition of the first role-playing game, some call it D&D, a major concept was the exploration of dungeons. A dungeon could be any limited location that the characters could explore room by room, but often it took the form of ancient ruins and forgotten crypts, full of monsters and treasures of old. We can assume that later editions of the game and the many games that were inspired by Dungeons and Dragons just copied this idea. The dungeon became a staple of RPG adventure and storytelling. But where did Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson, the creators of D&D, get their inspiration from? Luckily, we don't have to guess. I found this historical document deep in the dungeon archives. This document plainly states the inspirations that the creators drew from. This document is called the Appendix N. I can't claim that I've read all of the authors from this list, but I'm familiar with some of them. And from Robert E. Howard over Fritz Leibner to Michael Moorcock, from Conan over Fafat and the Grey Mauser to the Mines of Moria, there is no shortage of ruins of ancient, fallen civilizations in the great works of fantasy fiction. But hold on, wait a second. One of the names on this list is H.P. Lovecraft. And his stories in the Cthulhu Mythos are set in the real world. Still, they feature plenty of dungeons, beyond ancient and forgotten, buried under the sea, the desert sands, or the hidden mountains of the Antarctic. Our world is filled with the ruins of those that came before us, sophisticated civilizations, mighty empires, all fallen and buried under the sands of time. And in the 19th and 20th century, archaeologists uncovered many of these ruins and made newspaper headlines all over the world. Daring adventurers were not only digging up dried mummies and pharaoh treasure, they were also climbing the highest mountains diving into the deepest trenches of the ocean and reached the furthest and most frozen poles of the earth. And all of this became inspiration for the pulp stories of the 20th century, stories of dashing heroes and daring adventure. From the cheap paper pages emerged heroes like Doc Savage, Flash Gordon, and Tarzan. And eventually, Conan the Sumerian tread the jeweled thrones of the earth on her sandaled feet. So, there's literally inspiration, certainly. But I wonder if there could be something more. Let's dig deeper. I have only to go a hundred meters outside of my dungeon to find a stone cross by the side of the road, erected in the 18th century and weathered by age. 
editing server here with the correction. That stone cross is actually from 1906, a bit more than 100 years old. But that church there in the background is from 1408. So the point I'm making still stands. If I walk further, I come across the ruins of a medieval castle. And if I were to keep on walking a bit further, admittedly, I would come across Roman watchtowers, the Acropolis, and eventually the pyramids of Giza and the stone monuments of Globali Tepe. Human civilization is at least 12,000 years old. For over 400 generations, we have lived along the ruins of fallen empires. We have told our children stories of these giants that built those stone monuments around the campfire for longer than we had invented writing or even the wheel. I think going out, traveling to, exploring these ancient ruins and telling elaborated stories of these daring adventures around the campfire is one of our oldest storytelling traditions. So, when we delve into the lost mines of Van Delva, we honor these ancient traditions. But, speaking as a GM and writer myself, I know that there are entirely different reasons as well. Reasons far less mystical. Ruins and fallen empire also a necessity of the story. But I think that is a topic for another video. For now, I thank you all for watching and I bid you farewell. Until next time.